Hello, welcome to another edition of a Metro East mini class. These classes are intended to be abbreviated versions of the in-person classes that we offer each month at Metro East Community Media. You can sign up for these classes and learn everything from studio production to editing to field production. So a whole variety of video skills that you can learn in our inexpensive and fun monthly workshops. These classes though, or these videos, are designed to be abbreviated versions of those so that you can preview the material before you sign up for the in-person class, or you can, review, you can review the material after the class is over to help with your retention of the material, or uh, if you've taken the class already but have uh, forgotten things or would like to cover them again, you can just go back and, and uh, look at selected parts of what we cover in the class. We'll cover the material in short segments, so if you feel like you're comfortable with material that we're covering in the current segment, you'll be able to skip ahead and get to the parts that you're more interested in. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on the material from our basic editing workshop. Uh, we'll be looking at Final Cut Pro 10, the uh, Apple editing software that we use here at Metro East Community Media. Before we get into the actual mechanics of the editing program, um, let me just show you a little bit about the equipment that we're working with and also we'll give you a little bit of a tour of the software and talk about some of our policies around editing. Uh, so for starters, here uh, on the desktop we have uh, our Mac computer, a keyboard and mouse, a pretty basic system there. Um, and then uh, for, for editing, um, we actually have four editing rooms available that you can use. Uh, those rooms are available on the schedule that you can see on the screen here. On Mondays and Thursdays, the rooms are open from 11 a.m. until 10 p.m. On Fridays from 3 p.m. until 9 p.m. Saturdays, 11 a.m. until 9 p.m. And Sundays, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's a good idea to reserve the edit rooms if you intend to use them. Uh, you can just call our equipment room to do that. Um, and then you can reserve up to five hours per day and up to 10 hours per week. Plus, walk-ins are welcome. Uh, if you find that you don't have anything going, um, you can drop by. Even if you reserved your 10 hours for the week, you can still use additional time if you find that there's no one in an edit room. We'd much rather have the edit rooms busy. Um, our edit rooms, uh, there are four of them, are connected to something called a storage area network, or a SAN. The SAN basically is where you store the video and audio that you use in your editing project. Um, it's a really just gigantic um, uh, hard drive. Um, and there's plenty of space on there for you to store material for several projects. It is password protected, so the first time you come into edit, we'll set up an account for you where uh, when you come into edit, you'll type in your name and then type in the password you've selected, and then you and only you have access to your to the clips that you're editing with and um, uh, and the the projects that you create. Um, the SAN is connected to all four of the edit rooms, so you can begin a project in one edit room and then shift to another edit room as you work. Um, but keep in mind that the, the SAN isn't really intended for long-term storage. We hope that you'll, um, you know, that you'll manage this, the, the clips that you save on the hard drive if you're not using footage anymore, that you'll clear it off of the hard drive to make space uh, for others. Um, and then a little bit about the editing process. These are sort of the things that we're going to cover over the course of the class here. One of them is logging on to the SAN. Uh, we're not actually connected to the SAN for this demonstration, so, both, so we'll be simulating that. Uh, launching Final Cut Pro, creating, uh, sort of setting up your project in terms of creating things called a library, an event, and a project, and then importing media. So that's, you know, some of the things that we'll cover in the first segment. We'll also look at selecting and trimming clips, picking the, the footage that you want to use, and then picking the best parts of that footage that you've shot. Uh, beginning to arrange those clips that you've created into the desired order uh, for your finished program. Uh, and then uh, we'll also look at uh, additional skills after you've kind of laid out the basic meat of the program. Uh, then we'll look at also uh, controlling the sound in your program in terms of being able to adjust the audio levels to make it louder or quieter, adding additional sound like music, sound effects, that sort of thing. Uh, we'll also look at adding graphics and titles to your program. If you want to put credits at the, at the end or a title at the beginning or uh, put a graphic on the screen that identifies someone who's speaking, we'll show you uh, basics about how to do that. Also look at adding various different visual effects like clip transitions um, that uh, make a more interesting uh, transition from one bit of video to another bit of video. And then adding other kinds of effects like fast or slow motion, things that change the color of your video or 
give it interesting looks like a fisheye effect and those kinds of things. And then finally sharing, which is the final step in the process where you're outputting the finished program um, to, for the world to see, uh, giving us a version that we can play on our channels and also outputting things like a DVD or a Blu-ray disc or copying it on a hard drive or uploading it to YouTube. Those other kinds of uses wherever you want to share the video that you've created with the rest of the world. So that's a little bit about what we'll be covering uh, over the course of this video and that we cover in the regular editing class. Uh, so to get started, I want to just kind of show you around Final Cut here um, and give you just kind of a quick tour of what you see on the screen as you're, uh, as you're working. And then we'll go through and identify what each one of those parts is in much more detail as we go along here. So I'm just going to open up a little project here. Um, okay, so starting in the extreme upper left corner of the screen, um, you've got the kind of typical menus across the top of the screen here. I'll zoom in on those a little bit so you can see them better. Um, so we have an Apple menu. Uh, the main thing that you do in there is either shut down the computer or log out at the end of the evening. There's a Final Cut Pro menu uh, where you can quit the software when you're done using it. Uh, there's a file menu and an edit menu and so on. One of the things that you'll notice that you don't find here is a save uh, option. Final Cut, one of the great things about Final Cut now is that it just auto saves continuously so you don't run into that problem where you've forgotten to save after several hours of work and the computer crashes and you lose a bunch of work. Um, so Final Cut just takes care of that business for you. So those are the menus up at the top. Almost all of the functions that you find in the menus are duplicated with uh, buttons on the screen. So you may or may not spend much time in the menus depending on how you like to work. And then also in the upper left corner here, you have this little window down the left side of the screen here um, that sort of fills up this upper left corner up here. And this is where you kind of organize your work. So you have various levels of storage um, where you're um, organizing your work into sort of um, uh, folders and subfolders. The highest of those is called a library, and then we have these items below that called events that are contained within the library that's right above them. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about organizing your project when we get started on the program. So this is where you can sort of set up where you're saving your materials, um, um, starting new projects, that sort of thing, so that you can easily find materials later on. And then the window that's right next to that, this area right in here, is where you can browse the elements that you will actually be working with in your project. What you see in this window will actually change depending on what you've selected in the column to the left. So if I choose this library up at the top that says Workshop Demo, it shows me all of the elements that are contained within that particular library. Uh, the, these subfolders below that are essentially uh, called events, and those are like individual shows that you might be working on. So each time I click on one of those, it shows me just the materials that are contained within those events uh, to help you more easily find things that you're working with. So that's the, uh, the little uh, element browser window. And then just to the right of that, this area over here is called the viewer. And the viewer is what lets you actually just look at the different elements that you're working with. So if I hover over a clip in the, uh, in the uh, browser, I can just sort of skim through that by moving the mouse to the right or to the left to play forward or play backwards. Or I can actually just hover over that and then push the play button that's right at the bottom of that window. Uh, to be able to play a particular clip that I want to look at at normal speed. Uh, or I can um, um, simply uh, click on the clip and look at uh, a different still frame of each one of those. So it's a pretty quick way to be able to view uh, what, what, what you have to work with. So that's the viewer window. The viewer window will actually show you the clips that are up in the browser here, or it can also show you your finished project that you're putting together. That happens down on the window that fills the bottom of the screen down here. Um, they refer to this as a project, but most people call this a timeline. And the timeline is where you actually construct the finished program that you're making out of all this video that you shot by moving clips from the browser up here down onto the timeline and beginning to arrange them from left to right down the length of the timeline. You'll notice at the top of the timeline window, there are time cues. 
So at the far left edge, it starts here at zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, and zero frames. And we'll talk more about frames a little bit later. Uh, over here, you have 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and so on. So the length of the timeline is showing you basically the passage of time in your program. And then uh, in the middle of the timeline, you have sort of this darker gray bar, which they refer to as the primary storyline. And you can see that we've arranged a number of elements along the length of this. So from left to right, these are in the order that people will see them when you show your finished video. We have a bunch of different elements in this program. For example, this purple colored clip right here is the graphic that you see up in the viewer window that says Emily Edits up there. And then to the right of that, we have some video clips. So we have some shots of this woman, Emily, on her staff sitting in a chair talking, a kind of a wider view, and then a closer view in the next clip down. So I've gone through and picked out some portions of this interview of her and put them together to, to tell the story that I want to tell with the, with the subjects that she discussed. There's also audio, so just below each one of the video clips, you can see the little squiggly line that runs down the length of the clip here uh, called a waveform, and that reflects the volume at which Emily is speaking there. There's also another audio clip down below here, which is a, another sound clip, which is, in this case, happens to be music. It could be narration, it could be a sound effect, there's a whole variety of things that you could put down there. Uh, to go along with the sound of Emily speaking. So I can, for example, um, play this music clip at the beginning of the timeline and then have that music fade away a little bit as Emily begins to speak. I'll show you a little bit of that now. So I'm going to zoom back out here so you can see the viewer screen. And I'm going to play this just by positioning this little line here called the playhead at the beginning of the timeline and then pushing play and it'll start to play. Cuts are when you put two pieces of video together and it's almost the same shot. Like if you have an interview and it's the same shot and you cut a sentence out and all of a sudden it just kind of... Okay, so that's just the, the first little bit. Again, you can see that this purple clip represents that graphic you see. And then we saw Emily speaking. You'll notice that a graphic appeared over uh, Emily there. This graphic down here called a lower third. And that's this little purple clip that's right above the clip on the timeline. So you can see kind of the basic structure of how you assemble these together. Notice that the viewer window now is showing me the clips that I'm hovering over on the timeline, whereas if I move the mouse up to the browser window up here, it'll uh, switch over and show me the clips that are in that space. So that's just kind of the quick tour through the, um, through the basic layout. These are the elements that will be on the screen all the time when you're editing, um, so it's good to become familiar with them. Again, you've got the um, the window where you organize all the various different events and libraries that you'll be working with, the clip browser where you can uh, actually locate all the different bits of video that you'll be working with, the viewer window where you can see what your work, the video that you're, that you're actually editing, and then the timeline window where you're actually assembling that program together um, into the finished product that you want to create. Okay, so that's just a quick tour. Let me back up now and actually show you the process of logging into the SAN and starting up your Final Cut Pro project. To do that, I'm going to go up to here to the Final Cut Pro menu up at the top of the screen, up there, and select Quit Final Cut Pro. And then I'd like the, the program disappear here in a moment. Remember, I don't have to worry about saving because Final Cut has taken care of that for me. And then I also uh, want to log out. It's important that you log out at the end of your editing session so that you're not leaving your SAN account open for someone else to work with. So I'm going to go back up to that Apple menu at the top of the screen up there and select Log Out. Now we're using uh, a SAN login that we uh, use just for the class here called Class, cleverly. Um, so we're just kind of simulating the whole idea of logging in uh, to the SAN here. Okay, so when you first walk into the editing room, this is pretty much the screen that you'd see. Normally, you'd see one additional icon on the screen over here that's sort of a silhouette of a person uh, that says other, and that's where you would actually click to log into the SAN. Since we're not connected to the SAN for this demo, we're going to log in to this um, special little place here that says class. So I'm going to click on that. Normally, if you were logging to the SAN, it would ask you to type in your name, and then it would ask you to type in a password. Here, it's just asking us to type in a password, which uh, for this, we've just got the word class and it'll take us to the Mac desktop. 
At the bottom of the Mac desktop, you've got this little bar down here uh, that they refer to as a dock that has all these little colorful icons that represent the different pieces of software available for you to work with. We want to choose one here that looks like an old style movie clapboard uh, that says Final Cut Pro. So I'm just going to click on that and it should launch Final Cut for us. Final Cut uh, by default will launch the last project that you worked on. Um, so it's just going to open up the last thing that you were working on to make it easier for you to find those things easily. Um, if that's not what you want, then you can you know, open up a different event or open up a different library um, to work on the things that you're more interested in. So I'm going to start by closing the libraries that I have open here and creating a new one for our demo. To do that, I can just hover over the, the library, which is the icon that has the four little squares with the stars in them. It says Lauren class there. We have two of those libraries open currently, and you can have as many libraries open as you need when you're working. But the nice thing is that if you're not working with the material in a particular library, uh, it's easy just to close them and get them out of the way so you're not having to hunt through extra things. To close it, I can either just uh, highlight it and then go to the menus up at the top and tell it to close the library. I can also, in many cases, right-click using the right side of the mouse button. I can right-click on that and then close the project from there, and it'll just hide all the elements that work with that. Okay, so I'm going to make this one go away also, just so we can start fresh. So notice now all of our windows on the screen are empty. So I'm going to go up to the menu up at the top here, and I can either open an existing library or I can create a new one. Under the File menu, the first item on the list says New, and it gives you the options of creating a new project, a new event, and a new library. Notice though that project and event are currently grayed out, and that's because we need to create a library first so that we have a place to store those. So what are the library and event and project? Well, they're different kind of layers of storage. The way I like to think of it is, say that you were gonna be doing a series of programs um, that were music programs, and then you were gonna do another series of programs that were sports-related programs. Uh, it would make a lot of sense to create a library called sports and another library called music so that when you're working on your music programs, you're not having to you know, wade through all of those different sports clips that you've been out shooting. Um, so it's really uh, helpful to organize your work so when you're trying to find a particular clip that you want to work with, it's really easy to locate. Um, lots of times we have beginning uh, you know, editors who forget about that and they just have one library and they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of elements in it and it's really hard for them to find anything. So take it from a guy who's not really very good at organizing his work, it pays dividends to think about how you want to, you know, how you want to store these elements so that you can find them more easily later. So I'm going to start out by just creating a new library. So I'll go to file and new and library. Initially it's going to ask me to give that a name Notice it's already highlighted there, so all I have to do is just type whatever I want to call it. And it's going to, by default, save it into my sand folder, so it's going to be easy for me to find. And then I can just click Save. And I should now have a new library up in the upper left corner up here. Notice I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit so you can see it better here. It has the name that I've just given it, so that's the library that we just created. And underneath it, there are already two elements. There's this little folder that says Smart Collection, which we'll talk about later. Um, and more importantly, this single item right here is an event. So notice that this event lives inside the library that we just created. Notice that it's offset to the right a little bit. Um, I can rename this if I want. It just gave it today's date, but it's really easy for me to rename it just by clicking on it and then clicking a second time to highlight those, and then I can call it whatever I want. Now the first thing we're going to work on here is just kind of a little travel log of some footage hiking through a nice woodsy area with some waterfalls. So I'm just going to call it waterfalls. Um, okay, so what is the event? Well, I like to think of the event as being subfolders inside the library. So again, if this was your sports library that you're working with, and you were going to do one show about soccer and then another show about baseball, you might want to create an event for each one of those. Or if you're going to do something like uh, three episodes of a particular subject, you might want to make an event for each one of those different episodes so it's easy for you to you know, segregate the, the video that you're using for your first episode from the stuff that you're using in your third episode. So you can create as many of these as you want. 
either by going back up to that menu up at the top, and now I can go to New and Create Additional Events. And it'll ask me to name that event. And then it's, it also gives me the option of where I want to save it. So in this case, it's saving it in that same library that we just created. So I'll make another one here, and I'll call it Emily. And you'll see why that is as we go, uh, go, go along here and click OK. So now we actually have two different events. At this point, there's nothing in this project. There's no video to work with. There are no graphics. There are no photos. It's just an empty, uh, an empty vessel that we now want to start filling up with the elements that are going to eventually turn into our finished program. OK, so I'm going to go to the Waterfalls uh, event here. And the first thing I need to do is to import some media into that. That's an important lesson also, that when you bring media into your project, when you import the video clips that you'll be editing during your editing session, those, those video clips live within an event within a library. So it's important that you actually steer them into the event that you want them to be in um, so you don't have to go hunting around uh, through a variety of different libraries to find them. OK, so to import the media, I can click on the little icon here that says Import Media. That's right in the screen. Or if you're not seeing that, you can also hover the mouse right over the Waterfalls event there and click the right mouse button to open up this little uh, pop-up menu. And there's another Import Media function in there. Those of you who are enthusiasts of keyboard shortcuts will also see that there is a little keyboard shortcut next to each one of these functions. So I can, on the keyboard, push the Command key and the letter I to bring up the Import Media function as well. So there's a variety of ways that you can get to that, that function, also through the menus up at the top of here. So I'm just going to click on the little convenient Import Media button. And it's going to open up this window that just appeared pretty quickly there, which is the Import Media tool. Normally, when you're doing this, when you're connected to the SAN, up here in the left-hand corner, you see all the different places that you could potentially import the media from. Uh, you would see uh, under Devices here um, an icon that says Island, which is the name of the hard drive that is our SAN. So that's where you would go look. You'd click on that, and then you'd see a list of folders with different people's names on them that have done editing. And you'd find the folder with your name on it, and then open it up, and all the footage you have available would be in there. In this case, since we're simulating that for the class, I'm going to click on this little folder right here that says FCPX Training. And now all the elements that I have to, to edit with will show up in this window down at the bottom down here. Now, there are also tools to let you uh, move around through this window. For example, right up at the top of that, the window, there's a little pop-up menu here that enables me to go up or down in, um, in layers. So if I've opened up one of these folders, for example, and now I want to get back to that view that shows me the, all four of those, I can go up one level and see the different folders where I have things stored. Okay, so again, we want to, uh, first of all, edit this little uh, segment of waterfall footage. We've saved that in this folder here that's labeled Sense of Place. Because what we're trying to do here is sort of take the viewer on a little tour of this, this nice hiking location. I think it might be Silver Falls State Park um, down uh, outside Salem. Um, so we have a bunch of waterfall footage, and we want to string that together into a nice little travelogue. No speaking in this. Uh, this is just a chance for us to kind of get familiar with moving clips around and importing them, that sort of thing. So I can open up this folder either by double clicking on the folder, and it then shows me everything inside that. Or if I go back a layer or go up a layer here, I can also just click on the little arrow that's to the left of the folder, and that will drop down and show all the contents immediately below, below that. So each one of these items that ends in .mov is a movie. It's a clip of video that I've shot. Clip is defined in this case as just when you're out shooting with the video camera, when you push the record button and start recording, and then push it again to stop recording, the camera creates a clip. It's just, it can be a few seconds of video, a few minutes of video, it could be an hour of video. You don't know, although you can see things like the duration of the clip over here. This first clip is only seven seconds, the second one is 19 seconds, and so on. So if I click on an individual clip, it'll show me that clip in the viewer window that's right up at the top here. So I can just push play, and I can play that particular clip. You'll also notice right below that, there's a, sort of a little stretched out version of the clip that they uh, refer to as a film strip. It's sort of like the film strips that you might have watched when you were uh, going to, to grade school. 
um, it basically shows you uh, every few seconds, it's showing you another picture of you know, the, uh, where you are in the clip. So this is the very beginning, here we're looking at the middle of the clip, here we're looking at the end. So that film strip idea is something that you see a lot in Final Cut um, and uh, you know, it just gives you the ability to look ahead and see what's further on in the clip. You don't see too much change in these clips because for the most part, they're just sort of static, not moving shots uh, of action. But if you, if you saw someone walking across the screen, for example, you'd see them coming into the frame at the beginning in the middle of the frame uh, here and walking out of the frame further over to the right. So this is the beginning of the clip, the middle, and the end over there. Okay, so now we want to import these clips into our project. I can do that one by one. I can select all of them, or I can just bring in a handful all at the same time. To do that, you need to select the clips just by clicking on them so that they're highlighted in blue like this. You can also select a group of clips. To do that, I can click on the first clip at the, uh, of the group that I want to bring in, and then I can scroll down. Uh, by the way, when you're using a, a mouse like the one that we have here, let me just show you on the desktop, uh, this Apple mouse actually has a smooth surface, but it has a button on the left and a button on the, on the right. It just looks like a smooth surface there, but you can actually see um, the left side and the right side there. Uh, and you can also drag your finger up and down um, the mouse to scroll up and down, or you can move your finger left and right across the mouse um, to be able to, to go to the right or to the left. So I can drag across this way to go up and, uh, left and right. I can drag up and down to go up and down like that. And of course, you have a left mouse button and a right mouse button, depending on which side you, you click on with this. So that's the mouse. Okay, so back to the screen here. I can now um, you know, drag the mouse over the film strip to advance and sort of play forward or play backwards. I can push the play button. I can also just click anywhere here to jump forward and backwards in the clip. So to select the group of clips, I want to click on the first one. And then I'm just going to drag my finger over the mouse to scroll down and click on the very last one on the list. And if I hold down the shift key when I do that, it'll actually select all the clips in between. So again, I'm going to deselect here, click on the first one, hold down the shift key on the keyboard, and then click on the last one and it'll highlight everything in between. So that's one way you can do it. Another way on the keyboard is that you have a, a key that on a Mac is called the command key. It has kind of a little uh, cloverleaf picture on it. Um, and if you hold that one down, then you can randomly select different uh, clips. So if I click on the first one and then hold down the command key, I can click on another one further down, another one further down, another one further down. So it's that little key that has the kind of cloverleaf shape on it that says command. If I'm holding that down, I can just randomly pick and choose whatever clips I want to bring in. So in this case, I'm going to bring them all in at once. So I'm going to click on the first clip on the list, hold down the shift key, scroll down to the bottom, click on the last one so that they're all selected. And then to the far right hand side over here, there's a button that says import selected. So I want to click on that and it's going to bring all of those clips into my project fairly quickly. Now you can see um, that there's a little clock on each one of these as it's uh, importing them into my project. Okay, so now the clips are arranged here basically just kind of in no particular order, at least no particular order in relation to how we might want them to appear in our finished project. But now we're actually ready to begin putting these clips uh, onto our timeline and arranging them in the order that we want to do. So that's the first uh, few steps in the process, logging into your SAN account, opening Final Cut Pro, um, setting up your project uh, organizationally, like creating a library, um, creating events within that library, and then importing media into the event. Once you've done that, that's kind of the monotonous part of getting your project all set up. Now you're actually ready to begin the fun part of beginning to arrange the clips in the order that you want them to appear in the finished project.